Transcribed. The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Just about this time each week, we usually bring you some hints and ideas about using some of those fine craft foods. But we just don't have time to do that tonight because Christmas is in the air. And the craft choristers are waiting with a traditional carol. Gildersleeve's town of Summerfield is imbued with all the excitement and anticipation that attends the Yuletide season. There's the hurried search for the last-minute gift, the elaborate preparations for the big family dinner, and people are saying Merry Christmas to people they've never seen before. Some folks like to put up the tree very early and enjoy its fragrance and beauty, but it's traditional with the great Gildersleeve to decorate his tree on the day before Christmas. Leroy... Don't just jump up in the air and toss things on the tree. Oh, gosh, Uncle doesn't have enough tinsel on top. Here, let me hang it up there. Okay. Yeah. I can't reach the top either. I got an idea. Oh? Boost me up to the chandelier. I'll swing past and drop things. <laughs> Lira, you're not a monkey. But I can do practically anything a monkey can do. Yeah, well, let's leave well enough alone. Okay. A tree doesn't need many decorations anyway. Just presents. Yes, yes. Later on, how are you and Mr. Gilsleeve doing with the tree? We can't get enough stuff on the top, Bertie. Did anybody think about using the kitchen stool? Why didn't I think of that? Because you're not as smart as Bertie? <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, that's a risky thing to say before Santa Claus comes. Oh, hey, excuse me. I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. I'll get the stool. <laughs> Why, George, he's on good behavior today, Bertie. Yes, sir. You think we have enough lights strung on the tree? Oh, yes, sir. I wouldn't change a thing. Here's the stool, Unc. If I... It's too bad Miss Marjorie and Mr. Bronco ain't here this time. Yeah, but they'll just miss it, that's all. It's their tough luck. No mail from them this morning? Nah, they're not thinking about us. Well, I'm a little surprised that we haven't even had a card from them. Well, Bertie better get back to her kitchen. Just because there's only three of us, Bertie's not going to go slow down in the kitchen. Keen, Bertie. Ah, <laughs> Keen! Yeah, I guess you'll have to, Bertie. I'm up in the tree. Big man. Morning, Miss Cooley. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I came to the front door because I'm not here on business. Hello, Bertie. Uh, come in, Cooley. Merry Christmas. Thank you. I brought something for your tree. Hello, Leroy. Hi. I find it pays to remember my customers this time of year. Hello, customer Gildersleeve. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Cooley. That's very nice of you. What did you bring? Leroy, it isn't polite to ask. Well? Well, that's all right. I brought the water commissioner an egg poacher. An egg poacher? That's 
nice. I always give a lot of thought to my Christmas presents. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Now, let's see what we have for Mr. Cooley. What are you going to give him, a gallon of water? Ah, 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 you'll have to come up with something besides water. On the farm, we have our own well. Bertie, where is our gift for Mr. Cooley? Here it is, Mr. Cooley. Well, thank you. I better get back and look at that oven. The card says, do not open until Christmas. It's a necktie. Leroy. <laughs> well, he told us about the egg poacher. Glad you told me, Leroy. I wouldn't like to lie awake tonight wondering about it. Well, I'll take my loot and go home. Well, have a nice holiday, Cooley. Thank you, sir. I suppose you're expecting all the family over for Christmas. Well, Marjorie and her family are out of town. This year it'll just be Leroy and me. Yeah, we're going to have a ball, I'll bet you. It's too bad you won't have all your family together. We're having a house full. Oh, that's nice. All of my folks will be there, and there'll be Mrs. Cooley's sister from Kalamazoo and her brother from the Chicago Zoo. (laughs) (laughs) No kidding? He works there. Oh. <laughs> well, if you get a little lonesome, Mr. Gildersleeve, bring Leroy out to our house. Well, thanks, Mr. Cooley, but we'll be fine. Yeah. Who's going to be lonesome? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Well, Leroy, I guess the tree is ready. Unc, why does everybody feel they have to have a lot of people around just because it's Christmas? I haven't the vaguest idea. I guess they're just not as self-sufficient as we are, that's all. I don't know anybody who's going to have a nicer Christmas. Do you? Heck no. That's what I've been telling myself. Right. Yeah, right. Remember when there were so many of us it took all Christmas morning to open our presents? Yeah, I remember it well. But this time it'll be different. I can open a present, you can open a present. Heck, we'll have all that stuff over within half an hour. (laughs) I uh, suppose it would be nice, though, to... See Marjorie and Bronco. Yeah, but if they were here with the twins and the in-laws, what a clam bake. Well, Christmas is no time to bake clams. Yeah. <laughs> pretty good, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was pretty good. I... Leroy. Yeah? What are we laughing at? I don't know. <laughs> Part of the family away. I guess it isn't going to be much of a Christmas for Leroy. Well, I'll drop into Peavy's and get an extra surprise for him. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, you Merry Christmas. What can I do for you today? Peavy, what Christmas presents do you have left? Yeah, I'm just about cleaned out. <laughs> Say, you don't have much, do you? Christmas business was so good, I dipped into some of my leftover Easter stock. (laughs) Really? I took the cotton tail off the bunny rabbit, put it on his chin, and sold it for Santa Claus. (laughs) Phoebe, you didn't. (laughs) Well, I could. What color rabbit do you want? (laughs) No, no. I'm looking for a gift for Leroy. I thought you'd already bought him a bike, a football, and new skates. Yes, but this is a bonus gift. A little something to fill his stocking. And what about a chocolate malted milk? <laughs> now, Peavy, I'm looking for something unusual. That's pretty unusual. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Peavy, come up with an idea. Well, I presented Mrs. Peavy with a rather unusual gift this year. You did? I gave her a train ticket back to her mother. (laughs) Peavy. She wanted to spend part of the holidays back there. Oh, I see. Then we're giving our parrot some canary seed for Christmas, but that wouldn't do for Leroy. Well, I see I'm getting nowhere here, Peavy. Mr. Gildersleeve, in the spirit of Christmas, I'd suggest that you try to find something at Hogan Brothers. You're not even going to try to sell me? No, right now all I'm trying to do is to get you out of the store. What? I want to lock up for an hour and go hear the craft choruses. Oh, say, they're singing around the community Christmas tree in the square, aren't they? I'm here to tell you. I just may go down there and help them out a little. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Peavy. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, Christmas. Oh! No. <laughs> My goodness. Peavy, you're the one who should eat the canary seed. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, 
look at the people. Hogan Brothers is booming. Mr. Bentley, it's Harry. Yeah, I think I'll look in the sporting goods department. <laughs> Bye, George. I'll find something to brighten Leroy's Christmas. If I can get to the counter in this crowd. Uh, pardon me, madam. Miss, coming through. Oh, watch that umbrella, lady. Hmm, I was almost shish kebab. <laughs> One at a time, one at a time, uh, please. Clerk, I've been waiting. Oh, no, you haven't. I saw you push through the crowd, pushy. <laughs> now, see here. I'm the water commissioner, and I'd like to see something nice for a boy. How about a girl? <laughs> Smart Alec. Why don't you just look around? In a moment, I'll be glad to help you. Uh, would you like a gift wrap, madam? Uh, now, let's see. There's some basketballs, punching bag, table tennis... Yes, young man. I'd like to buy this fishing rod. Well, I'm afraid that rod isn't for a boy. Well, that's Leroy. I don't want it for a boy. I want it for my uncle. Oh. That rod is quite expensive. Well, that's okay. My uncle isn't going to have much of a Christmas. I've got to cheer him up. Well, this should do it. What a boy. Let me see how much I got now. Uh, one dollar, two dollars, two fifty, seventy-five... Seventy-six, seven, eight... Little Leroy, spending his pennies on me. I guess I don't have enough. Oh, we have some cheaper ones. Uh, Leroy! Hi, Unc. Uh, excuse me, there's a lady at the end of the counter waving some money at me. Unc, what are you doing here? Well, I might ask you the same thing. I asked you first. Leroy, I know why you're here. I couldn't help overhearing what you said to the clerk. Well, gosh. Where were you? Yeah. I was looking at the punching bags. <laughs> Unc, how, how, how about having lunch on me? I'm loaded. You're loaded. <laughs> no, lunch is on me, my boy. Come on, we'll shop later. Hey, that's the Kraft Choristers across the street in the square. Let's go here. You bet. Nothing like carols at Christmas. <laughs> Group of singers, eh, Leroy? Yeah, Keen. Hey, look, there's Mr. Peavy over by the platform. It's a wonder he isn't up on it. And look, Unc, Chief Gates and Floyd Munson. Yeah, and there's Dr. Pettibone with his boy home from school. Looks like everybody's here except Marge and Bronco. Stiff upper lip, Leroy. Well, shh. They're going to sing again. Ding dong bell, ding dong bell, ding dong bell. Oh, 
Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Well, Christmas is so close, the bells you just heard might very well be Santa's sleigh bells. But before that jolly fellow comes to you, this is John Heaston on behalf of all the folks at Kraft, wishing each and every one of you the merriest, jolliest Christmas of them all. Great Gildersleeve and Leroy are facing a situation they've never before had to face an empty house at Christmas time. Each is trying to give the other the best possible Christmas, and the water commissioner is sure he has come up with the right answer. Bertie? Yes, sir. Leroy isn't home, is he? No, sir. Oh, good. What you got there, Miss Gildersleeve? More presents for Leroy. More presents? Yeah. Open the closet door, will you, Bertie? The closet's full. You better dump them here in the den and lock the door. Here's a good idea. Watch it, Bertie. Oh, just look at that. What'd you do, buy out the store? Well, just about. Yes, sir. Bertie! Uh-oh, Leroy. Come in! We better get out of here and lock the door. Bertie, has the postman come around again yet? He's made two trips, Leroy. No word for Marjorie and Bronco, huh? Nothing so far. Of course, you know how the mail is at Christmas. Yeah, that boy needs cheering up. Leroy? Yeah? I suppose you noticed I locked the den door. No, I didn't. Well, I did. And don't try to find out why I locked it. Okay. <laughs> Aren't you curious? Well, I guess it's something you don't want me to see. <laughs> Um, can I go down to Piggy's? Yeah, I suppose so. Unless you want to stay here with Bertie and me. Well, they're having a swell time down at Piggy's. They got a house full. Oh. So long. Goodbye, my boy. Bye, Leroy. He doesn't seem very interested in his gifts, Bertie. No, sir. You got out of the house in a hurry. Mr. Gillsleeve, Leroy wants to be where there's something going on. Well... Perhaps I should invite some people over for Christmas. Now you're talking. Why, George, why haven't I thought of this before? Why don't I ask my girlfriend? Miss Tuttle? You bet. Her family isn't here. And there's Peavy. He said Mrs. Peavy was going away for the holidays. Oh, Leroy likes Mr. Peavy. Sure, we'll have a crowd in. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll get busy right away. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas, Bertie. Yes, sir. <laughs> Why, George, this is a great idea. I just wish it was working. Miss Tuttle would be out of town, visiting relatives. Oh, well, it'd be a lot of fun to have old Peavy. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Did you find something for Leroy at Hogan Brothers? Oh, a few things, Peavy, but Leroy and I want you for Christmas. <laughs> you want me gift wrapped, or can Santa Claus just drop me down the chimney? <laughs> Yeah, well, Peavy, we want you to come over and spend the day. Enjoy our Christmas with us. Well, I appreciate the invitation, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I, I've decided to go with Mrs. Peavy to see her family. Oh? Mrs. Peavy and I wouldn't enjoy spending Christmas apart. Oh, I see. I'm sorry your family can't be together this year. Well... Uh, excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll wait on little Mrs. Potter. Oh? <laughs> She's still buying every pretty pill she sees? <laughs> Just about. Merry Christmas, Mr. Peavy. Well, thank you. The same to you. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mrs. Potter. Merry Christmas. Who is that? It's Commissioner Gildersleeve. Oh, it's you, Sonny. <laughs> I didn't recognize you. Oh? Uh, my glasses are all fogged up. But you're coming through now. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Uh, Mr. Peavy, I'm still looking for a gift for a friend of mine. You don't say. She's so hard to buy for. She's never ill. Well, I don't know what to suggest. <laughs> of course, this is the mustard plaster season. So it is. If she doesn't use them this year, mustard plaster keep well. Well, it is something she could wear, if she's lucky enough. <laughs> but then... 
She couldn't show off my gift. Uh, Mrs. Potter, have you thought of a nice atomizer? That's a thought. I'll take one, Mr. Peavy, if you put a gaily colored gargle in it. Uh. <laughs> well, I have several suitable shades. Red, green, lavender. I'll take the red. It's Christmas, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tie some ribbon on it. See, si. Leroy likes Mrs. Potter. She might come over. Uh, Mrs. Potter. Yes, sonny? How about coming over and spending Christmas Day with Leroy and me? We got a big tree. We'll have a lot of fun. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, it's nice of you to think of me, and I know I'd enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, but I'm spoken for. <laughs> oh. The party I'm buying the atomizer for invited me, and I couldn't miss that. Her husband's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry you can't be with us. Here's the gift. Shall I charge it, Mrs. Potter? Oh, would you? I want to hurry back to the square to see the rest of the Christmas program. Oh, did you hear the craft choristers, Mrs. Potter? Oh, yes. And did you see the magician dressed like Santa Claus? No, no, I missed him. He kept making things disappear in his beard. Yes, I noticed that. He ate lunch in here. <laughs> he's so clever. Yes, he is. Mr. Gildersleeve, he's the same fellow we hired for the YMCA kids' picnic. Oh, Leroy didn't get to go to that. Say, Leroy likes magicians. I, I wonder if I could hire him to entertain Leroy tomorrow. I bet if you show him $20, he'll make it disappear. By George, anything for Leroy. Like a beautiful Christmas morning. You better get downstairs and see what Leroy's up to. You don't think I'll tell him a magician's coming. I'll surprise him. It's awfully quiet downstairs. He's usually whooping and hollering. Am I the only one up? Why, George, this is the first Christmas I can remember that I've been awake for the kiddies. Uh, kitty. What's the matter with that boy? Leroy! Leroy, get up. Confound it, it's Christmas. You better plug in the tree lights. Make it look cheerful in here. You yeah. wonder why they always put light sockets behind couches. There. Martin, Miss Gilfie. Good morning, Bertie. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Where's Leroy? Oh, he's on the way down. I had to wake him up, Bertie. That ain't like Leroy. Well, this isn't like our usual Christmas. No, sir. Hurry up, Leroy. I'm coming. We've been waiting for you, my boy. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Uncle. Merry Christmas, Leroy. Merry Christmas, Bertie. Well, now, I'll be Santa Claus and distribute the gifts. Okay. Leroy, do you want to be the first and open that big package? I know what's in it. I can see the bike pedal sticking through the paper. <laughs> Is that all you have to say? Oh, sorry, Uncle. Thanks. Bertie, here's something for you. Thank you, sir. Oh, and what's in here? Leroy, what you suppose I got? I don't know. Well, I'll uh, move some of these packages so I can get under the tree. Oh, oh be careful of the one on top, Uncle. It's a music box. I got it for the twins. Yeah, I'll, I'll be careful of it. Oof, dropped it. It started to play. Maybe I better unwrap it and cut it off. Oh, that's so pretty. Why don't you let it run down? What a play, Uncle. Yeah, good idea. <sighs> that silent night. It sure is silent around here this Christmas. No, Bertie. I sure miss Miss Marjorie and them little twins. I wonder what they're doing this morning. Leroy, let's not let it spoil our Christmas. The fun's just beginning. Who are we kidding, Unc? This isn't Christmas. Well, it just doesn't seem like it because we're alone. I mean, the little family isn't all together. Here, here's another package for you, Bertie. Yes. And a big box for Leroy. Just put it by the bike. Oh, my goodness. 
I sure wish the twins was home to hear that music, Pop. Please, Bertie. Let's not dwell on the subject. I'm not dwelling on it. I'm just wishing they was here. Oh, oh, dear. You know, Bertie, last Christmas the twins were riding me piggyback. They sure were. And calling me Uncle Leroy. It isn't every kid my age who's lucky enough to be an uncle. A lot of good that's doing us today. Uh, shall we open more presents? Oh, Mr. Gilsey, it ain't just getting presents. It's wanting to give them and being with people you want to give them to. Well, that's true, Bertie, but... That's Christmas, and this ain't it. No, Bertie... It sure isn't. <laughs> now, wait a minute. This isn't all there is to Christmas. I have a surprise coming. Yeah? What is it? Well, I'll give you a hint, my boy. You know how you've always liked magic. Magic? You mean I'm getting a magician's kit? No, no, you just wait and see. You like this. I'll go to the door. You no, know, no, Bertie, I'll get it. I think it's my surprise. Yes, sir? Yeah, that magician couldn't have come at a better time. Merry Christmas, Mr. Gildersleeve. Merry Christmas, Unky. What? Marjorie! Bronco. Oh, oh Miss Marjorie. Yes, yes, oh, Bronco. Oh, well, oh, oh, it sure is. Hello, Bertie. Hello, Miss oh, Marjorie. How is everybody? Hello. Hello. Hi, Marge. Hi, Bronco. Oh, how's my little brother? Hi, bub. Come on in, Linda. Hey, look at little Linda. Oh, <laughs> Merry Christmas, Linda. Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, bless you, my dear. Ain't that cute? Hey, Linda. <laughs> Come on, climb on. I'll give you a horseback ride. Yeah, good idea. Oh, boy, what a Christmas. Say, where's Ronnie? Oh, he's still sleeping in the car. I'll get him in a minute. Mr. Gildersleeve, you're looking bigger and better all the time. <laughs> well, thank you, Bronco. Especially bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's great to see you folks. Oh, Unky, we wouldn't think of spending Christmas away from home. Oh, Miss Margie, all of you sure are looking well. Oh, thanks, Bertie. Well, by George, let's all go in and, and gather around oh, the tree. Oh, yes, let's do that. Yeah, we have oh, some oh, presents yeah, to put yeah, on there. Yeah, well, you bet. Unk. Huh? Yes, my boy. You sure figured out a swell surprise. Me? Couldn't be better. Well, I... I'll get it! No, I have to, Bertie. Now, how do I make a magician disappear? Here I am, Mr. Gildersleeve, with my bag of tricks. Well, uh, here, here's your money. Why don't you take the day off? Of course. You mean it? You bet. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Unc, what's going on? Just a little Christmas magic, my boy. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kraft Foods Company and the Fine Kraft Coil Group, the Gildersleeve family and our friends... Wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Gildersleeve was presented tonight transcribed. Tonight, play You Bet Your Life.